Say hello to Cricket, Adafruit's creative robotics platform. It's an add-on to the popular Circuit Playground Express, Feather, BBC Microbit, and Raspberry Pi. Make Robot Friend and learn how to code using CircuitPython, MakeCode, and Arduino. Start controlling motors, servos, and solenoids. You also get capacitive touch, signal pins, a NeoPixel driver, and an amplified speaker output. With Cricut, you can extend your dev boards with all the goodness of your microcontroller, but now with a robotics playground. So get started by checking out the Adafruit Learning System, and be sure to subscribe for more project ideas. Live from New York, it's SS Engineer. Hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of Ask the Engineer. It's me, Lady Ada, the engineer, here at the Adafruit Factory. With me is Mr. Lady Ada on camera control and doing all the video stuff. We're here at the Adafruit Factory, which is silent right now. It's quiet, sleeping after a long day of making all those cool electronics, shipping them, testing them, fabricating them, doing documentation, designing new things. All sorts of stuff happened here at the Adafruit Factory, but right now we're going to go through what's happening in this week of making That's an right. exciting show. What's on tonight's show? Yeah, well, first off, we uh, played our new video for Cricket. Um, we wanted to show people what Cricket is and some mm. of the projects. Uh, thanks for watching that. That's hot off the press. We just yeah. uploaded a few minutes ago, so I wanted to show it to everybody. But on to tonight's business. Tonight's code is FEEDS, 10% off a native fruit store all the way up to 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time. That gives you 10% off a native fruit store, everything except for gift certificates and Adabox. Adabox subscriptions are open again, so you can, of course, start subscribing, starting with Adabox 9. Yeah. It supports us, an open source hardware company here in New York City, making and sharing electronics. If you like to see companies like Adafruit out there succeed, use the code FEEDS, save a buck or two while you check out show and tell people around the world showing and sharing their projects lady ada will talk about who's on the show and tell i'd love to mailbag pack the mailbag we'll stop by read your letters to us time travel look back in the world of makers hackers artists engineers news and more main new york city factory footage 3d printing new products your top secret We'll answer your questions all over on Discord, adafruit.it slash Discord. If you're watching, make sure you go to adafruit.it slash Discord. Sign That's where up we now. Do all of the questions Join at the in. end of the show. And we have a trivia question to give away at the end. All that and more on. You guessed it. Dun, da, da. Sweet. Okay. What an so, exciting show. Yep. It's so, jam-packed. Don't forget the code feeds. Um, Lady Ada, we have our freebies. are all in we stock do. right now. We so do. So you get UPS ground. You get... The circuit playground, you get permaproto. Wait, no, hold on. The union contract says I have to explain the freebies. Yeah, sure. You can't explain Well, them. we do it every week, so I, I just figured I would just do that real fast. All but, right. but you can go to adafruit.com slash free and see all those. But if that's you want to tell people what they get. I fine. do. I, I practice all week, yeah, right? Yeah, fine. $99 or more, you get a free permaproto, a half size breadboard. At $199 or more, you get a free UPS ground shipping in the continental United States. That's a high quality, trackable shipping, so you know your order is going to get there when it says it's going to get there. And $299 or more, you get a free Circuit Playground Express our all-in-one development board that supports code.org, CS Discoveries, Microsoft Make Code, Circuit Python, and of course Arduino, all that and more. Every time you order, you get everything at the previous levels. So people love our freebies. That's our freebies. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, we also have different types of shipping, UPS. We suggest that for um, continental US. Yep. Um, if you want to save some money, but you have more time, sometimes Postal. the time, sometimes money, Postal is an option. Takes a little longer. longer. Um, and then, of course, international DHL, that's where you want to... That's good. Um, good stuff. Yeah, you want to use that when you want to ship international. So it's a fine range. Yep. Okay. Okay. Next, uh, same day delivery in New York City. Check out before 11 a.m. If the zip code is in Manhattan, we can get it to you the same day. You'll see that as an option. All right. Next up is show and tell people around the world every single week, 7.30 p.m. Show and share their projects. Lady Ada, there are some great projects on the show this week. Yeah, we had a lot of people come by. Yep. Let me tell you all about them. First off, we had Scott, who told us he was going to show us a keyboard. And so I thought, oh, it's another one of, you know, like a custom keyboard with like Cherry MX, which is no. Uh, he went and got a Yamaha keyboard at the thrift store, um, and he wants to turn it into a multi-voice circuit Python synthesizer. So he showed it off. He's going to gut it. He's going to put some trellises in. He's got 
plan it out. So uh, keep watch out for that because that's going to be a pretty cool project. Scott, it's, it's shown tell sometimes what is Circuit Python? What is Scott putting Circuit Python on this week? Phil B um, previewed Spectro, the Revenge of Spectro, an old project that we're um, redoing with a Raspberry Pi and a, an RGB matrix. Looks really cool. Um, also wanted to shout out and tell people that the Vintage Computer Fest is happening this weekend in the Bay Area. So if you're in the Bay Area and you love old computers, because who doesn't love old computers, um, you can go check out the Vintage Computer Fest. Uh, JP um, showed off this week's uh, upcoming JP's Workshop project. He's going to be doing a Lego-based draw bot, like a, a, a what's it called, um, spirography type bot. I don't know if there's a word, hyperchiroid, whatever the word is. This cool. Uh, ovular drawings you can do with a Cricut Circuit Playground Express and some MIG code. So we'll uh, sh talk about that. Um, so you'll talk about that tomorrow on his live stream. So visit that tomorrow. And then Noan Pedro uh, showed off the paddle bot in some video of this week's project that they did for 3D Hangouts. We'll show the video as well. It's a cute uh, bot that goes into a lake or pond or, or uh, a pool. Uh, Chris Young. Uh, talked about the guy that went live this week from him. It's a talking NeoPixel clock. Um, it's like a super fully featured clock. He's got renderings in um, uh, Fusion 360. Um, it has a cuckoo capability. It speaks the time. It has like events and chimes and all sorts of stuff. It's a very full featured clock. So he went the extra two, three steps. Not just one extra step, but like two steps beyond what most people do with a clock. JMK is building a Gemma M0 dot star necklace with capacitive touch. And um, Azure came by and showed off a one year long lightsaber build he's been working on. Um, it uses a Teensy with a sound effects uh, board and it has like really cool lights. You can change what lightsaber color it is and like when you turn it on, it goes like whoosh. And when you touch it, it, it makes the, the staticky sound and, the, and the, it flickers. And then um, he's got a control box that has an itsy bitsy M0 with a Bluetooth module so that when he's um, wearing a costume, he can control the lightsaber so hand it to somebody else and have he can kind of control the effects of the lightsaber remotely so kind of a neat project we're definitely getting ready to go to some costume events uh, maybe a star wars theme maybe not and that's the show and tell okay all participants on the show and tell get as seen on the show and tell sticker email support at adafruit.com and we will send you out a sticker it is part of our adafruit live series of shows jump art show is tomorrow at 4 p.m eastern time don't forget to tune in. And here is a treat from last week's show and the very popular video. This is turning a well-known painting into something a little bit more interactive using Cricut. Ah! Definitely got that existential angst going there. That's right. Next uh, packet the mailbag stops. So I reread these emails to our entire company every single week at our State of the Fruit meeting. We also read those here. Hi, Lady Ada. Here's seven-year-old Emily uh, Holcomb soldering the power boost shield. She's quite exceptional. And uh, there she is. Aww. Yep. That's awesome. So when folks ask, can seven-year-old solder? Apparently they can. All right. Don't forget adafruit.it slash discord. That is where you can ask your questions. I see a couple of questions in some of the other chats once in a while. Make sure you're going there now. Um, every week during GP's yeah. show, we have Make Code Minutes. And it's like a minute-ish of all the things you can do with Make Code. Well, but Phil, there's no way you can possibly write code in like one or two minutes and have it do something. Yeah, you can now. Well, you can? Yeah, no, you can. It's possible? No, you can. With Make Code? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, you can. Oh, you proved me wrong. We can now. Now. Yeah. Okay. Not earlier. <laughs> Not before. Now. All right. So we have these two. These yeah. So I wanted to play one of those, and then we're going to talk a little bit about Circuit Python. Okay. Take it away, JP. For our Make Code Minute today, what we're going to do is take a look at the NeoPixel uh, subheading of the light category. So if I click on NeoPixel here, uh, we have a set strip block that we're going to grab, and I'm placing that inside of a on start loop. So let's move this up here. So what, I, what I'm going to do when I uh, start up is I'm going to set a strip to be on uh, the A1 pad. What I'll do is click the plus sign, and you could pick which of the Circuit Playground Express 
uh, ports you're connected to, so I'll leave that at A1. And if you click the plus sign a second time, you can tell it how many pixels are on your strip. So I'm gonna say 60. The next thing I'm gonna do is head again to NeoPixel. So the very last block, if I throw this in on start, and we're gonna set that mode to RGBW. Uh, so that will initialize the strip, and then we can pretty much use any of the NeoPixel um, blocks at this point. What I'll do is just grab an animation block. Um, so this is actually all we're going to need is just these two loops on start and forever. And then in the forever block, what we'll do is uh, for every uh, tick of the clock, the internal clock on the Circuit Playground Express, it's going to play a frame of animation. Um, so I'm going to use this Comet animation and also run that same Comet animation on the onboard NeoPixel ring that's on the Circuit Playground Express. So I'll grab a show frame of animation. Let's pick the same animation. Okay, and now what I'm gonna do is turn on the Cricut and you'll see my external ring also running that animation. And so that is using external NeoPixel rings or strips with your Circuit Playground Express and Cricut. And that's the Make Code Minute. And that's a make code minute. Um, some news in the world of CircuitPython. Um, so our, we, we've been submitting this awesome list thing, and then yeah. the person is like, I'm, I'm, I'm burnt out from doing an awesome list. But now it looks like it might be back. We're reviewing other awesome lists. So that's happening. Well, it's um, still happening. But you can always visit the awesome list at Adafruit. Yeah, so we keep track of all these links and everything. But um, one of the things I notice, and I don't have, I used to, I used to be a journalist in the day, but now I just... Where's now, your last? Yeah, you have to no, I don't even do that anymore. <laughs> but now, now I just run an fruit with you. Yeah. But if I were to write an article, it would be it would be a really long article. But some people have been writing this, so maybe I don't need to. It's like <laughs> Python is coming to microcontrollers. Yes. And there's some interesting things that are that's like this is kind of working. So one of the things, um, and we get this is from um, IEEE Spectrum. This is also in the Economist. Um, it's also everywhere. It's like here's the most popular language. So Python is just like it's it's increasing by far. Yeah, every this, year. this is actually embedded in specific. Yeah. So that's why PHP is lower because PHP isn't used as often as embedded yeah, languages. Yeah, Python, is, C++, C, Java, yeah. C sharp, PHP. Um, so the the interesting thing though is when they wrote about it, it's like okay, that's pretty cool because we've been doing a lot of stuff with Python. Yeah. One little blurb, they're like, oh yeah, um, here's why it's working out with Python. But then they know, they mentioned one thing. Microcontrollers now have enough power to host Python to play with attached hardware, and they link to Circuit Python stuff. Yeah. So we're getting closer and closer to this. Like, okay, you know Python. Guess what? Now you can run hardware with it. Then something else happened. Got my latest issue of Make, and uh, Carrie, who is known as one of the MythBusters, um, they're like, "This is a really cool project. Want to write an article for us?" I'm sure she said, "Yeah, sure." Well, what did you use? Circuit Python. So that's another neat indicator that Circuit Python is continuing to snake its way. Yeah, she was. Hardware. She's doing um, workshops and projects for um, kids and girls who want to do electronics, and so she wanted to make it easy and fast. It'd be to super teach. easy, super fast. Super fast. And um, and she said this is super easy. Then the other thing is like, well, what happens when entrepreneurs or people are doing Kickstarters are like, hey, here's a cool new platform. Here's what it runs on. Yeah. Here's what you can do with it. Yeah. And uh, this is a little solderable thing. It's the HCC mod ready to solder module, and. Uh, Wait, two, two zoom things. in. Two things. Enhance. Enhance. Order. What, what can do? Enhance. Arduino and CircuitPython. CircuitPython. So it's CircuitPython compatible, and that and that's starting to see that this one of the things that we see. So we keep track of all this stuff in our Adafruit Daily Newsletter, Python and Microcontrollers. Sign up for it. If you're not signed up, it, sign up. If you, if you, you know the, you know the stories here, it's like, well, you know, Bezos' parents are three, they, they, they're 30 billionaire now because, you know, they, they, they gave them a little bit of money yeah. in the beginning and people like I had a share of Apple and it'd be worth a trillion dollars or yeah. something but this is one of the things the investment of your time to learn Python will give you probably big payback, yeah. big, big payback. so if you if you're thinking about if you know Python if you think about oh what programming language could um, these kids that I do workshops with do whatever they learn in Python they can learn with um, hardware later. And we're talking about how we, the guides that we do now, we pretty much write the code in CircuitPython. Like almost every project that we do, yeah, you can do it in CircuitPython and it makes it so fast to so, develop it. And then people can edit and update it. You don't have to teach them like, okay, here's how a header file works. You just say edit this line, edit this text, upload this image I'm or change the WAV file. steal and maybe paraphrase the, the, the maybe the new moo tagline. It was Python 
makes code easy to read. Yeah. Moo makes code easy to write. Circuit Python makes electronics easy to make. Mm. And that's how those things like chain together. Yeah. Like you, you need humans can read Python code. That's one of the yeah. good things about it. Moo, the editor that we like, makes it easy to write that code. Yes. And Circuit Python makes it easy to make those electronics that work with all that. Yeah. So anyways. Um, all right. So that's just this week. That's just one week of Circuit Python news. There's a lot going on. So much going on. Yeah. Okay. Um, so time travel. I just got one thing this week because we have a lot of things on the show. Um, it's a uh, back to school month, so all in August, check out our site. We have back to school sales and discounts and projects and everything going on. August is the time to stock up yep. on all these things. Um, so that that is our time travel news because this is coming up, um, of course. And don't forget, feeds. if you want to start saving money right now, feeds. Okay, Lady Ada, we are an open source hardware company. We are. And to prove it, we have an Adafruit learning system with all these guides. We do. We have. Uh, 1,531. And you know how we had that cricket video? We have yes. an Adafruit learning system video. Look at all these videos we're doing. We have these about videos because we have so much stuff now. Now it's time to tell a story. Well, also people want to, they were like, what is it? I want to know in 51 we're, seconds. We're the opposite of a Kickstarter. We don't do the slick video in the beginning to convince you to, to, to buy we stuff. We do the end. We, we make 1,500 guides like, you know what? Let's make oh, a yeah, video. We should probably Let's make a video about, about the Adafruit learning system. Yeah. All right. Because it wasn't, we don't want to have false promises. Well, we're busy making the 1,531 th guides. Also, to be fair, like, because we have so many guides now, we could pick so many projects. So, yeah. anyways, here's a uh, guide. You did the voiceover, Colin did the video, all the team worked on the script, so take it away, us. Have you heard about making, cosplay, and electronics, but don't know where to start? The Adafruit Learning System is home to over 1,500 tutorials for electronic projects, ideas, and techniques. From beginner guides on your first soldering project, or what a battery is and how to work with basic components all the way to advanced projects with displays, microcontrollers, lights, and sensors. Each guide walks you through the making process with step-by-step -step instructions, photos, videos, code examples, and diagrams. From beginners to experts, there's something new to inspire everyone. Visit learn.adafruit.com today and check out some of the amazing projects that you can make. Okay, and yep. now let's get to the guides. So let's, we got a lot uh, of guides this week. We got a lot. What you okay. got this week? I, I put it into three different slides. I know, because this yeah. was a massive week. I'll get to them really fast. Okay, so we've got the Crickle Paddle, Cricket Paddle Wheel Bot, uh, Boat Bot, that's from Noah and Pedro. We'll show the video later. It's a little uh, pool noodle uh, floaty bot that can you can attach a GoPro to to take underwater videos. We've got a pair of guides from Mike Borella, Make It Keyboard, Make It Mouse, continuing the Make It series, which is um, very simple, quick, just get it going, proof of concept for both CircuitPython and um, make code with Circuit Playground Express. Um, these two examples, you show, we show how to turn your Circuit Playground Express into a keyboard where it can type things um, or a mouse so it can click buttons. And this is really great if you're making uh, interactive projects that want to connect to a computer. Um, you want, you know, uh, so, to turn something into a keyboard or you want to have um, uh, like a big mouse interface or you want to uh, interface with software that doesn't have um, like an API, you can often have con you know key commands that'll automate stuff for you. Um, and then this project is great from Davis Stells. Um, we saw this really cute video of a sugar glider, these little like squirrel type creatures, and they like to jump from high places and they open up their arms and then they have the skin that kind of lets them glide. So we made a version with the um, Circuit Playground Express and using the accelerometer, it can detect when it's in free fall mode and it'll open up the wings of the glider and it'll, it'll glide down uh, safely. So uh, he tried uh, throwing it in his house, but Dave said he might try this weekend to do a uh, from his roof gliding attempt and we'll see if it survives um, that trip. But it's a cool project and it works really great. It opens up the wings when, it, when you toss it and then as soon as it lands, it closes the wings for safety. So uh, sugar glider uh, DIY project. Okay, next up we have the Scream. You saw the little video, how to make an interactive project. This also uses Circuit Playground Express, the microphone. When you scream at it, it will um, use the cricket to move a servo back and forth and also play a screaming audio clip. So that's in Circuit Python, And uh, it's very uh, soothing. Like you can really get your angst out and this, the painting says, yes, I agree. I will also scream uh, back at you. Um, we also have a fun project if you have multiple people 
zombie tag game. Uh, this is in Make Code and Circuit Python. If you have three or more people, you can set them up to be zombies, humans, or healers. And it's kind of a tag game using infrared. So it's kind of a cross between laser tag and hide and seek, where if you're a human, you want to hide from the zombies and hang out near the healers um, and watch out because the zombies are going to chase you and they'll turn you into a zombie and then you have to go and eat the humans as well. So a good project if you have a camp um, in August, there's a lot of people in camp or um, doing workshops. This is a good one. Everybody can build this project and then play in the classroom. Uh, we got that uh, Chris Young project, talking musical, new pixel clock um, with infrared, Bluetooth energy, and touch controls. This clock has everything in it. It's got the kitchen sink. Um, it's an awesome clock. It's got some great renderings. It does everything you could ever want from a clock, and it's this beautiful ring um, that you can 3D print and place on your desk. So check that out. It's an extremely detailed guide. Also from David Stells, you can see right below me, is a cricket snake bot. Um, and this robot um, has a snake motion. And it's got this tail that um, goes behind it. And it's got two bumpers. So when it bumps into the wall, it'll turn around and snake around shapes. So it's a really cool yeah. um, snake robot. And you can build it. It's fully cardboard made. It looks super fancy, but just construction paper and cardboard, really easy build. And if you get an Adabox 8, um, you can build it using uh, many of the parts in that. Excellent guides this week, Dave. If you're in the chat, um, give Dave a hug report for these excellent These guides. are super great guides. Um, and then we've got the Circuit Playground Express Treasure Hunt um, from last week. Um, this is another project. You have a bunch of Circuit Playgrounds, and each one of them emits a treasure code, and then you can set people off with um, a hunter that will have to hear all the codes to activate, and when it activates them all, it turns rainbow. So hide a bunch of circuit playgrounds or in a classroom, a school, um, or your home, and then uh, set the kids off to try to find them. And when they, when they come back with the rainbow, you can uh, say who's the winner. The Android Gboard Morse code control. I think this is from last week, but it's such a good project. Why not talk about it again? Yeah. You can create a um, assistive technology interface with no soldering, connect it to Android, and use Gboard, which is the, the Google keyboard that allows you to um, enter in Morse code and will translate it into text. So great if you have people who want to enter text and they can press two buttons um, for assistive tech or maybe you just want to practice your Morse code. That's another good reason. And then um, Mike Barella did, um, so oh, Make, make it, it Sense. sense. Yeah. Massive, massive guide. Uh, we've even updated today. Pretty much how to use each sensor on the Circuit Playground real fast with quick example code in Circuit Python and make code. So I think that's the guide. We had like eight new guides this week. We had a lot. Epic. Okay, Dougie. Um, let's do some Main New York City footage. We have some selective solder uh, videos and more. So I'm going to play all the ones with sound and then we'll go to the ones without sound.
we've got a few more here since mm -hmm. we have our new um, AR app. <laughs> no, no. Adabot hangs out now in places where normally Adabot oh. would not be allowed. Drink Adabot straws, loves hanging out. Adabot is like, hey, when, 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 when will these electronics be out of the oven? Yeah. So virtual straw, Adabot, with, right uh, if you go on the, the Apple LED. Store, um, just search for the App Store, I should say. Just search for Adafruit, and you, you, you too can... Uh, Oh, look, Adabot's helping out, doing yeah, inspections. This, this is a 3D printed one. This is not the AR one. Okay, but it's... Yeah. Yeah. So it's looking Oh, good. hey, wait a minute, Adabot. Yeah. Don't go into the oven. No! And as, <laughs> <laughs> and as always, uh, this is what our picket plates is fall asleep to every single night. All right, we have some big news for we do. Adafruit.io. So we have uh, one thing we just mentioned. Adafruit.io is our maker-friendly service uh, we have a free we have a pro version we call plus and uh, we added a very requested feature it's feeds that's why the code's feeds feeds it's that big of a deal okay but these are special feeds so yeah. historically you could either have public feeds or private feeds and private feeds are feeds that only you can see and public feeds are feeds that anybody can see and so there were some people who said hey i want to be able to share a feed and have it be like semi-private i don't want anyone in the world to see it i just want to see have my friends see it or, like a or, I want, or I want to share a feed and I want to be able to have someone else publish data. That's from right. That. Yeah, that's so a hard thing to do. That's a very hard thing to do. So we added that capability. We now have feed sharing. So you can share a feed between uh, two or three or as many people as you want. And each one uses its own uh, data plan to uh, push data to it. Um, check it out. We also updated the guide uh, yeah. as well, the IO Basics guide. So here you go. So you see, you is, click on the thing. Like, so let's say if you wanted to share a feed for a uh, washing machine yeah so when is it done so multiple people would know yep could use that in your data but you don't want everyone in the world to know when you're doing laundry no so you would uh, share it you get a notification the sh uh, feed has been shared then you can choose read and write yep some might just be able to read some if you're publishing data at the same time and then um, in your uh, account you can see all the feeds that are shared yep so check that out if you're on Adafruit.io it is a new feature it is now. Yep, and check out the IO Basics guide, which is updated. Um, if you want to see all this step-by-step -step instruction, Brent just uh, we published an updated page on it. You can just search the Learn System for feed sharing, yep. and it'll pop up. Okay, next up, 3D printing. No, Pedro printing up a 3D storm this week. They have their Pedalbot, and uh, take it away. Go Pedalbot. What's up guys, in this project we're building a cricket powered paddle wheel rover. This simple waterbot is 3D printed and features a tripod mount for capturing underwater photography. The rover stays afloat with the help of pool noodles that are secured to the 3D printed enclosure. We use NinjaFlex filament to 3D print watertight mounts for the motors and components. You can get a full list of parts used to build this project linked in the description of this video. Use Adafruit's make code to program your water bot to maneuver around obstacles. Use the onboard sensors to make it interactive. Start by replacing the motor connections with silicone wires to make them strong and flexible. This 3D printed housing will help prevent water from getting into the motor. These are flexible and press fit together. Check out the full tutorial for this project by heading over to the Adafruit learning system. We use the set screw to secure the 3D printed paddle wheel to the shaft of the motor. This will prevent it from wobbling and slipping out. The brackets for housing the pool noodles are secured to the motor mounts with additional machine screws. We'll need to assemble two of these to create our rover. Our 3D printed tripod mount snap fits onto the enclosure and locks in place. You can install a threaded insert to attach camera mounts and tripods. The camera cover fits over the top of the enclosure and snaps shut. We can then secure the two brackets to the tripod mount with additional machine screws. To create our flotation device, we can measure and cut pieces from a pool noodle which we picked up from our local dollar store. These are press fitted into the retainers. Now we can thread the motor wires through the opening in the top of the cover and pull them all the way through. We can skip soldering and use this two-pin wire joint to tie our wires together. 
We're using the drive section on the Adafruit Cricut to control our motors with the higher current. The wires are inserted into the screw block terminals with plenty of room in the enclosure for excess wires. We can secure the waterproof battery holder on top of the cover with more machine screws. This Ninja Flex gasket will keep water out of the DC jack and plugs into the side of the case. Be sure to seal any exposed wires with hot glue or electrical tape. Lastly, we can add a little bit of personality before testing it out. This little water bot can support the weight of a GoPro session and a small swivel tripod adapter. You can adjust the tripod to get different angles or secure different components like a humidity sensor or additional lighting. And although it's not completely waterproof, it is water resistant. We can confirm it will survive an accidental dip in the water. Well, thanks so much for watching and be sure to subscribe for more 3D printed projects from Adafruit. Okay, and then we have a 3D printed speed up. Yay! Stegosaurus. Let's see it. Don't forget if you want to learn how to make all this stuff, watch 3D Hangouts every Wednesday with Noah and Pedro. Um, I have a reminder. Ding ding. Adabox 9 is now open. It'll ship out um, beginning of October and it's Halloween themed. That's all we could say. Yep. And it starts now. So all the Adabox. Halloween starts today. Yeah. Because it's August 1st and that's official. That's right. So um, go to adabox.com, sign up. Um, your first Adabox would be Adabox 9. Yep. And, uh, but what if they missed all the other Ada boxes? You can do? go to our website and we uh, stock past boxes. That's right. Don't we have do. everything. So there's some surprises we weren't able to put in, but it says everything that's in them now. Yeah. Um, but Ada Box Nine will be a surprise. Halloween theme. That's all we can say. Okay. Okay, uh, Lady Ada. Before we go off to new products, codes feeds. Feeds. Ready? Okay. Okay. Good. New 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 new. Okay. All right. First up, um, this is a straggler because uh, we didn't get a chance a to uh, take a photo of it last night because it, well, it, it came in late. Yeah, it actually came in late. It was really weird. It came in a different package for some reason, okay. so it didn't so come in. So we got glowing, glowing neon lights. Maybe you missed like last neon. week. Who knows? So we now have these um, neon flexi strips in red. Um, yeah. So what's cool about them is they're not really neon. They're actually LEDs and they're molded into silicone, so they have this really beautiful neon effect, and it's they're nice and skinny, and they're incredibly bendable, um, and the, you can sort of see the LEDs, there's like 130 LEDs per meter or something, and you can cut these, and if you don't mind digging into the silicone, you can uh, solder some more into them. Um, they're not addressable, um, you get, you know, it's basically the whole thing is on or the whole thing's off, you can PWM it if you want to dim it, uh, just give it nine to 12 volts, and it lights up, so these are great for, um, because they're so weatherproof, they're silicone, so they're, they're good for projects that um, are going to go outdoors, um, projects where you want nice diffuse lighting. We have them in all the other colors. Um, I think we sold out, we're going to be getting more, but right now we just put in some red. So if you want a bright red neon flexi, uh, check it out, it's in the store. Okie dokie, next up we have um, these standoffs that you may recognize Very from... familiar. So, um, yep. Standoff screws, size of them. 
Yeah, these are these were coming soon, um, and we put them in Ada Box Eight, and then we because we've completely finished all Ada Box Eights, we have a bunch left over, and we'll be stocking these in general. Uh, I can show them off really fast. Um, you know, it, if you buy a Cricut, it comes with the standoffs already. There's a, these parts here, but maybe you're making your own custom board. Uh, or maybe you want to attach a Gemma or a Flora or a Circuit Playground Express or a micro bit to something else. Um, they fit really well and we use them for both electrical and mechanical connections. So um, data and power goes over them as well as um, just actually holding it physically to the board. And then, you know, this is what you get. So you get these nice brass standoffs. Uh, they are M3 screws and you get um, some Phillips head screws as well. So. Very handy, uh, good if you want to make your own uh, biscuit, as David Stells likes to call them, or other custom circuit board. No, how come the screws don't have to be brass? What does it not matter? Um, you know, I was actually wondering, I think standoffs, because they have to be machined a certain way, um, it's easiest to make them out of a soft material like brass or aluminum. Mm -hmm. It's very rare to see stainless steel um, screws, where screws are often stainless steel. Um, because they have to be nice and strong, but it works quite well and, and they don't oxidize or anything there Okay, and then the pads of course on the circuit playground are gold. So now you get three different materials All right um, So we have a couple of these these are there, there's two different ones. But, yeah, um, and these have been something that We haven't asked about asked about asked about so let me hold, hold let me just let me demo. A lot about this these are poe modules so we have a poe splitter in the store but when the raspberry pi 3 came out the b plus we we're like oh shoot we should um pick up these modules these are standardized modules and we have two kinds we have one that's non-isolated and that's this one and we have one that's isolated which is the next one and you can tell it's isolated because in this next photo you see how there's this big chunky thing that's a transformer um, both give you five volt regulated out if you give it the four PoE center tap connections. Um, the regulated one, the, the, the non-isolated one is about 1.5 amps. The isolated one is about 1.8 amps. You can always go a little bit over, but basically it's, you know, one and a half to two amps. And then, you know, here's a demo. I've got, um, let me back this out because this is a big demo. So you've got a TP-Link, I've got a PoE hub here and you can see it says PoE. So this is powered from um, a wall plug and then on the other end of the ethernet which is a nice long ethernet cord we have um, the raspberry pi 3b plus now you have to have the 3b plus this won't work with the 2 or the b or the 0 because you need to connect to these four pins here see these four pins i can't unplug them because it would turn off but um those are the center taps for the ethernet and then you plug them into the module. So this is the isolated module here. And then on the other side of the module, you get power and ground, and you plug that into the GPIO headers. And um, note that there's no power plug here. It's completely powered off of this ethernet cable. So this is really great if you want to minimize your power. Now you're probably wondering what says USB and HDMI. Well, just going to show you can power a screen from it as well. So yeah. you can have a screen, a touch screen, a Raspberry Pi 3B plus, and you have a little bit more power budget as well. Um, um, the Raspberry Pi 3 draws about 700 milliamps when you're really running it, and maybe the screen's under 500. So as long as you keep under 1.5 amps, which you should be able to, you can basically power it off of Ethernet. I'll show you where this will be the most handy. So uh, we're in New York, and there's tons and tons of like interactive displays. There's tons of exhibits. There's tons of things. And sometimes they use a Raspberry Pi, and there's just like tons and tons of cables. Yeah. This Less would cabling. this would be one of those times. It's like, oh, when would you use power over Ethernet? And it's like, well, when when you want to minimize the amount of cabling you need to do, um, especially for, let's say if you had 50 of these, I don't really want 50 power supplies. Yeah, you have to have 50 power supplies and it just, you know, that gives you another place that something will go, go wrong. And the micro USB connector, like it's good, but it's not gonna be as, as strong. I mean, these ethernet connectors, because they have the clippy, yeah. they don't come out. Whereas the micro USB, you can pull them. These, you actually have to, you know, you have to flick the, the cable and you know if you have a boot, it's protected. So this is more durable and also means you get both data yeah. and power. Um, great for Internet of Things projects, you know, Ethernet works great. And yeah, we have two versions of the module. The isolated one is a little bit more expensive. It's higher current. If you want isolated um, power and data, then go for that. If you don't need that, then the lower cost non-isolated one, it will work just fine. Both of them work great with the Raspberry Pi 3B+. And then later on when the Pi Foundation releases their hat, that'll be like a full two and a half amp 
major thing. But this, if you don't mind doing some wiring, you can get started now. And there's a couple other uh, products out there that often take PoE modules. I know the old Arduino Ethernet did as well. There were sockets for it. If you have a product that has sockets for a PoE module, this is a standard PoE module and it will almost certainly fit. They kind of, everyone sort of decided this is the pinout shape. Okay. So this is the PoE demo. Speaking of wires. Great. More wires. Okay. So uh, you have uh, micro switches or arcade buttons. You want to connect to them really easily. Um, you don't want to solder. These quick connects will be your best friend. This is great for installations or if you're making an arcade setup. Let me grab them as well. And we have two sizes. Um, they look very similar, okay, but I should the first one. Should the second one? You know, you can't tell the difference <laughs> until you, you look at the close-up. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do some close-up demo action so people can see the difference. One is 1.87. Yeah, the, that end is the same. It's a yeah. about 2.5 millimeters at that end, and then the other end. But I'll show it on the overhead. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. it's tough because it looks similar. One's I think 2.5 or 0.25, and one's 1.9. Yeah, this is stuff. It's like, okay, this. This, that. that oh, this. Let me shoot on the overhead. I think I can, I can demo it. So, some switches that we have, like this um, big wire micro switch, has these really large um, quarter inch uh, lugs on them. Let me zoom in. So this will fit great there. So you see, this is just slides right on, and you've got a nice solid connection. Um, you know it. It will fit quite well. You can also, of course, solder it or crimp it again. Um, we also have this smaller one, and note it, it like won't it kind of sort of fits, but it's a tight fit. Um, so we have both kinds. And then on this, which is another kind of micro switch, um, yeah, again, you can use um, this one on this switch, and this one on this switch. And then for this, you'll want to use the big one. So you'll have to measure connecting your switches. It's, it's kind of hard to tell. This one I can just say like, oh, it looks chunky, so it's probably the bigger one. Um, but you can use calipers or a ruler and measure it and then pick the matching one. And then what's nice is, for example, this you know micro switch that also has an LED built into it. Um, on the other hand, on the other end, you get these JST XH, which are 2.5 millimeters. And um, they're close enough to point one inch that you can basically use them in a breadboard. You just have some wires, or if, if you're using a um, header, you can use header to connect them, or um, just plug in some wires into this and then lead them off to wherever you want. It makes it a lot easier to connect to these uh, sort of quick connect, connect spades. So there you go. We got now three sizes, these two in addition to the current one, the older one we have. Okay. Yep. Next up. We have a uh, hundred pack of these um, cute plastic rivets. We showed these off. We had a pack of 20. This is what you're going to do with it. This is what you're going to do with it. It's great for when you have cardboard and you want to attach it, but you don't want to like staple or glue. Yeah. You just poke a hole with a pen and snap the two pieces together and they just rivet together. Super easy. And now they come in a pack of 100. Yeah. Show, show them show. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, so, so many demos have to go off. So you, get, you just get jam packs. This is great for workshops or something, but yeah, you get two yeah. pieces. And um, you can see one has a little nub and one has a little space. And they're, they're meant actually for fabric or paper, but we use them for cardboard. You just yep. snap them in. Perfect for cardboard. And um, what's nice is they have that nice big gap you can see yep. here. So two pieces of cardboard work quite well. And we're going to get some more size rivets as well because people have been asking for more rivets. Okay. Next up. Okay. So um, this is an update um, to these Wago blocks. Um, these are snap-on blocks that um, you get a pack of three, and each and all five get basically connected together. And um, one second, um, you can show on the overhead. So these have um, little snap-on things here, and they they basically make a permanent connection without you having to do any soldering. So you have a, a piece of wire that's stripped. And you put it in, and you snap it closed, and it's like That's permanent. Good. So great for when you want to have like a bus. You want to connect like a power connection. All five of these have to be connected together. Um, you don't have to use all five. You can use three if you want. But it keeps you from doing like the twisting and then using a wire nut. Ah, eh, kind of ugly. Not so much fun. This is nice and clear. You can see through, so you can see all your wire connections. 
Um, this is an update. We carried these before, and this is a slimmer, transparenter, I think a nicer quality one. They've, Wago updated this. So um, people who do wiring projects, like, use these. I mean, like, this is way better than twisting wires and soldering them. Okay. Higher current, too. It's like 40 amps. Yeah, someone's going to ask, so thanks. Okay. Next up. Oh, we got these backpacks. So if you have seen in the shop, we carry... Um, backpacks with um, uh, uh, sorry the LEDs like 8x8 matrix LEDs and you put a backpack on the back and so it's much easier to wire you only use I squared C to connect to it uh, and people have been asking us to just sell the backpacks we have the 8x8 backpack and then we also have the 1.2 inch backpack um, we sell the LEDs in the store if you go with other LEDs they may not be wired correctly like they have to be wired exactly the way that the ones we have in the shop are and if you get the wrong anode or cathode type um, you're going to be very sad so we just got to warn you about that we only guarantee them to work with the ones in the shop and I'll just show on the overhead real fast this is the 1.2 inch backpack so it's kind of a gigantic PCB and you can short these jumpers to have up to eight on different I squared C addresses this is the 8x8 we have a couple of different colors and uh, round and square pixels so you will get these without the leds and you can solder leds we also of course carry them with the leds so this is for di wires all right and then uh tonight starts show besides you and our community lady ada um i put this in because i thought these were neat yeah this is kind of interesting hold on let me grab my nine volt plug oh. um so these are interesting because of um, they're NeoPixels, but they're UV NeoPixels. So each one of those little segments has a WS2811, which is a, a NeoPixel compatible chip, and a triple output UV LED. So you see here it's um, just running the, the basic strand test for NeoPixels. Now they're all basically the same color because it's just UV. This would be interesting for doing like an event or costume where you have some fluorescing material and you want it to fluoresce. So it looks kind of weird because it's, it's purple, um, but it's UV LED. Now it's not gonna be like the strongest possible UV. It, you know, it's not gonna be like a UV black light, which is gonna be incredibly powerful. But um, if you have some um, fluorescent material like this, you can see it does fluoresce um, with it. Yeah. So it's addressable. Right now I just have them all on so I can sh sort of show this demo. But um, you can see it does, it does pick up, fluorescent items will pick up on it. So if you have a plastic that shows up particularly well under UV, um, this would be a good match. But I just thought it was kind of interesting to get, instead of RGB um, pixels, get UV pixels. So yep. an, an interesting thing works with anything that does NeoPixel code, this will work with. Just remember that RGB is just UV, UV, UV. So you can't like, you're not going to get green. Yeah, there's probably some, this is one of those cool products where someone's going to do something cool with it. There's probably some type of instrumentation or some chemical process or something, something, something where it'd be really neat to have addressable UV. Yeah. And we'll we'll hear about it later. We'll see it on the show and tell. We'll do a blog post about it. Yeah, this, is, this is definitely something interesting and weird. So I thought, yeah, like, let's get it. I had a couple of people ask me for a while ago. They wanted to do costumes and they wanted to have the yeah. LEDs you know be able to turn on like it was a it was a helmet that had uv um strands coming out of it and they wanted it to have a, a forward and back effect and they were like hand soldering uv leds so yeah. this way it's done for you okay okay so uv neopixels and with that lady is a new parcel Whew. That's a lot. That's a lot. okay okay let's uh so we recap okay new 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 We've got this thin, flexible, neon-like strip in red. We've got these bolts that you can use to bolt your Circuit Playground Express to something, like the Cricut, or you can use a, for other devices. We have two PoE modules. These are PoE 802AF, whatever modules. They work great with the Raspberry Pi 3B+. We have a normal one, 5 volt 1.5 amp, and an isolated one, 5 volt 1.8 amps. We've got uh, two versions of these spade connectors to JSTs, uh, great for arcade or micro switch wiring. One is a 0.187 inch and one is 0.25 inch. Um, measure your spade lugs and then use these to connect to them. You've got a hundred pack of these very handy uh, cardboard rivets. This is what you do with them. We have an update to the WAGO 5 block. Five wires go in, they all get connected. Really high quality 40 amp switch. Uh, 
um, switchable connections by WAGO. We've got the 8x8 and 1.27 inch segment display backpacks without the LEDs. So if you have your own LEDs, you can supply them. I squared C to segmented control. And we've got these pretty cool 32 LED per meter UV output NeoPixels. They're like NeoPixels, but they're only UV output. Cool stuff. Okie dokie, Dakota's okay. feed, um, any of that stuff's in stock, use it 10% off until 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time, or I remember to turn off the code. Um, you have the top secret tonight. I do. All right. It's so tough From secret. From the vault. From the vault. Hold on, I gotta power it up. Okay. What could this be? What okay, could this so be? It, what could this be? What could this be? I don't know. It's, oh my goodness. Wait, hold on. Oh. Hold on. Let me reset. <laughs> uh oh. Live demo. Oops, maybe a wire got broken. But I'll broken show it wire. off anyways. Now it's really a top secret. Yeah. I think I know what this is. Yeah, I don't know what happened here. Let me just try one more thing. Reset. You can do it. Oh, I think I know what this is. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, wait. I got this on upside down. That's why. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. Woo! This seems like... Okay, now I got the hang of it. This Sorry. This seems like an RGB trellis. Maybe. Mm. It's not out yet. Okay. Okay, now, now I gotta really squish the buttons. Okay. Anyways, cool stuff coming soon. Live demos. Squish. All right. Okay, back to the vault. Back in the vault with you. Okay, we're over on Discord answering questions. Um, yeah, I didn't have my Discord hoodie on yeah, to you celebrate. Yeah, Discord hoodie on. Don't forget, adafruit.it slash Discord. Um, someone just wanted to say, I just messaged this. Uh, this is my Wednesday night, my time, my peeps, my relaxed time. Thank you, Adafruit. Oh, thanks. Yay. Yeah, okay. hang out with us. We're, we're, yeah. we're the best okay. friend you is get. It, is it possible to protect stepper driver chip outputs from motor disconnects when powered accidents happen? You know, some chips care and some chips don't. I know that um, the um, AS series chips are picky when you disconnect them, but I found actually the ones that we stock in the shop, the DRV88 series, I've not heard of any issues yet with people disconnecting the stepper. So I think it depends a little bit on um, what uh, chip you're using. But yeah, there, most chips don't like it when you, you, know, you have a, a huge kickback or something unexpected happens. So. Yeah, accidents happen, but I guess that's why they have removable stepper drivers on ramps boards. Oh, and can you do a little demo of how, so you put a wire in, but where does the wire go out? How does this work? Oh, yeah, let me, let me show. The, thing is, the, the wires we grabbed are not stripped. So imagine these were stripped. Um, so all four of these connections have a bus bar. So then you can um, plug each wire in, and they basically all get connected together, um, but you don't have to solder them. So it turns into one wire. It turns them into one wire. Oh. Sorry if I didn't make that clear. But yeah, it's so simple, it's hard to explain. Yeah, basically now all, all four wires are connected together through this gigantic metal bus. That's good. So that's really handy for, like, you could have a big set of power, big set of ground. If you're sharing, yeah, yeah. sharing power, sharing ground, or sharing signals. Um, I see these a lot. Like what we actually use them a lot for um, NeoPixel installations because it's 40 amps. So you have all the power wires for all the strips go to the bus bar, and then you just clip them in. Yeah. So now some they have, there's interesting ideas on what you can do for the uh, um, UV stuff, advertising signs, uh, black light posters, uh, dog pee, and carpet finder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. Do you have some way to compile Git code and load onto Arduino Uno or Raspberry Pi 3B? Um, well, each project's going to be a little bit different, but yeah, usually you'll you'll get some code from GitHub and then compile it. But it depends on the project. You know, each one is going to have its own make file or instructions. So hopefully, the Git repository you're using has a README. So look for the README yeah. or install.txt file. Yeah. Um, another someone said this is like a splicer um, or a pigtail, but not. Yeah. For that. yeah. That, that's a good way it, to... It's a joiner. It's, it's a, a joiner. It's a, it, you know, they're called bus bars, but a lot of people are like, what, you know, like, oh, it's like a place to drink on a large vehicle? No, it's... Yeah. yeah it's, the words are very complicated. 
Okay, well, we'll see if we have any more questions before we give away. What do you want to give away? Now? We're going to give away a UV LED strip. Really? Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Maybe you can put this phone underneath the thing. Yeah, I will, uh, I will clear okay. off. The well, we're going to do uh, we're going to do a giveaway now. Yeah. And the giveaway tonight is for a, one. Yeah. UV LED strip. You can find all of the fluids from mammals. <laughs> wherever you, well, this is the idea. Is. It was for a costume. Yeah, no, I know. It's, it's okay. high this is, but that is true because you know there's black light. Yeah, I know. Okay. So All right, this, so we got the we yeah, got we the have this phone. phone here. Yeah, that we'll be able to see it. But okay. um, what are the rules? Rules are the first person to call and ring this magical Radio Shack phone is going to be the winner of the prize. You have to pick up the phone, and uh, sorry, I have to pick up the phone when you ring, and I'm going to ask you three questions: your name, where you're calling from, and a project you're working on or you want to work on, maybe using a UV LED strip. And uh, then we'll send you off a, a UV NeoPixel. So yeah. call this number. Oh, bit stab. That's the phone number. Ring the thing. It's going to ring twice. And I'm going to pick it up. I'm going to say hello. You've reached Ask an Engineer. And then I'm going to say hello a couple more times. And then turn off the audio on your computer. I know there's yeah, a lot of steps right. here, but. Yeah, it's like a radio show. Yeah, yeah you know. Let's see. Uh... We will, uh, we will wait. Call up. Yeah, there's always a little bit of a delay. That's but fine. Oh, oh, here we go. Oh, this is what the phone looks like. Don't, it don't pick it up yet. No. Look. See? Okay. okay. Pick it up. Hello? 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 Hello, you've reached Ask Engineering. Congratulations, you're the caller. Uh, cool. Very cool. Very cool. What's your name and where you're calling from? Uh, my name is Salim. I'm calling right across uh, the river from you guys, Bayou, New Jersey. Okay, sorry, what was your name again? Salim. Salim, okay. Well, uh, Salim, congratulations. You're the winner of a UV LED strip, product number 3851. To claim your prize, all you have to do is email support at adafruit.com, S-U-P-P-O-R-T at adafruit.com, and say, hey, I'm from New Jersey, and uh, I deserve a P8. 51 and they're going to send you one so you can P851 got it P3 3851 Oh 3851 Yeah that's the product number that way they'll send you the correct thing Uh so what's a project you're working on or you want to work on Oh my god I've, at any given time I usually have like 20 things in the hopper but um uh right now I'm actually building a, another 3D printer for our makerspace Oh cool well you can decorate it with some UV LEDs maybe that could be kind of fun Absolutely. All right. Well, when you finish your next project, come by on the show and tell and uh, show it off. We'd love to see it. Will do. Appreciate it. All right. Well, thanks for calling. Have a great night. All right. Bye. Bye. Okay. Success. Okay. One UV NeoPixel strip away. Okay. Well, that's the show for tonight, everybody. Uh, don't forget the code's feed. It's all the way up to 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time. You can save 10% off on everything except for Adabox and gift certificates. It supports us. Source hardware company. We'll keep doing this every single week as long as we can pay the bills and there are bills to be paid. Um, we're here next week, 8 p.m. Show and tell, 7 30. JP, show tomorrow at 4. Yeah, cool, Pedro cool drawing bot. Was uh, today, 3D Hangouts. So tune into all of the shows and more. And uh, special thanks to all of the community that's out there and all the different chats, especially Discord. And thanks to all our Adafruit remote team members and our Adafruit team members that are here with us in New York. And we'll see everybody next week. All right. Thanks, everybody. All right. Here is your moment of Zener. Have a good night. Bye, everybody. Bye.